Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Wigging Out with Bobby Z. As you can see, that I'm in the same outfit as my steaming straight hair tutorial video. And that's because this is this wig right here. And this is about 45 seconds after I finished that tutorial. Just because I had to do something else to this girl and I figured I'd show you guys how. So today's little tutorial is a quick little tip on how to do temporary roots on wigs. Now this will work on synthetic hair. I've not tried this on human hair. I would imagine that it would work, but I would think that if you were using a lighter color such as a platinum blonde 613 or a white kind of color, that this could possibly stain the hair. So that's a disclaimer right there is human hair acetone will take pretty much anything out of it. You can also wash it really nice with some baking soda. Should should come out, but in the case that it does stain it, don't say I didn't warn you. Do a patch test in the bottom of the wig. You'll be good to go. As you can see, this one has no roots. This one has roots. But you can see that it gives it a nice little dimension in the front of the wig. It makes it look a little more natural and also can blend out if you have dark hair underneath. It helps you blend out your real hair. Have you ever done this on blonde wigs? Um, usually, actually, I've done it on this other wig that's already rooted. I've done it on there about three or four times. I've yet to do it on this wig, but... Synthetic hair is pretty much all the same. The color just sits on top. It washes right out. The thing about this is I'm not quite sure if this will work on dark hair. I'm not quite sure I haven't tried it yet. So you guys feel free to try it at home. See if you can put an even darker root or maybe a lighter root in something that's darker. Let me know what works for you guys in the box below. So, so easy. You guys are going to wonder why you never tried this before. And it's great because it washes out. So what you're going to need, obviously, is the wig of your choice. I'm using... This wig, which is mainly um, Platinum Blonde 613, and then there's some low lights in there, like a 16, 18, something like that, like just a little bit of a blonde. I don't like f flat white blondes. I like them to have some dimension and low lights in them. You can kind of see up through here if she has some dimension. An eyeshadow brush of some sort. This is... This is just a, a cheap little one from CVS. This is by Essence of Beauty. You don't need, it doesn't need to be a great quality brush. You can probably even use a paintbrush or um, a sponge applicator or something like that. But I'll be using this little guy here. You're also going to need eyeshadow. So this is my Morphe brush palette that I bought at um, the beauty show this year. And I'm going to be, that's where the black was. The black died. I dropped it and it cracked and I was really sad. So I'm going to base, I'm going to be using some of these matte browns that are over here. You don't want to use something with this sheen or something with glitter in it. You want to use a matte brown because you need to give that depth effect of a root. If you stick to matte, it'll make it go away from the eye. It'll make the blonde pop a little more. You'll also need hairspray of your choice. I'm using the Got To Be Glued because it's what I have 18 bottles of and I like it. So... Here we go. You'll notice that this block says Eric Middle Shlomo. The great thing about working on Broadway is a lot of times when the shows close, they don't want to keep stuff like rollers, brushes, hot rollers, even head blocks in, you know, in the show package. So a lot of times they'll sell them to you. So I was able to buy these. I bought four, I believe, from the company when it closed. Now I have way too many canvas blocks. I don't know what to do with them all, but I kind of still want more. Is that sad? My strange addiction, canvas blocks want to do first is you're going to want to brush your wig thoroughly out just to make sure that there are no tangles or anything like that in your hair. It's a lace front wig. You want to make sure that you have it thoroughly blocked on the head. Link down here to how to block wig. This is only going to be for a photo shoot where you're only going to see the, the part in the front edge of this hair. I'm only going to shade the front edge and the part of this hair. If you want to spend the time and do it, you can shade the whole thing but for me, that's just kind of a waste of time because I'm only going to see the front edge. Section out the front, you know, half inch to an inch of hair or so from the front edge, kind of like that. Same thing on the opposite side. Section it out, bring it over, put a clip in it. You kind of have to figure out which color or colors I'll go down level by level until I find the one that's right for me. You don't want to start with something like black or gray and have it just look too garish and too dark because then you're going to have to wash the wig to get it out. So I just like to start with a lighter color first and build up from there. Also, I like to start on the side over here and then work my way forward just because that way I'm working on top of the sections that I just did. 
The first thing you want to do is you want to take your section and you want to hairspray just the root area like that. The hairspray is what's going to make the root shading stick to the hair. You then want to comb it through a little bit just to distribute that hairspray. I'm going to start with this brown right here, which is sort of like, I'm going to do a little swatch on my hand. It's a medium dark brown. It's not quite too dark. This would be something that you would build a crease with, like your first color for a crease if you're doing something smoky. So I want to see if that color will give you enough dimension for what you're going for. And then you just want to go on top while the hairspray is still wet, and you're basically feathering on that eyeshadow with your eyeshadow brush. So you can already see that that's already giving me a little bit of a root shading right here. And then you want to go behind it like this, and again, shade it in. So you can see here it's half done and I closed my blinds a little bit and I shut off my overhead light just so you guys can see this a little better because it's um, early morning here in the city so the light's a little bright. But you can kind of see here the difference and how it just gives it a little more depth, gives it a little more dimension. So, so bright, I'm sorry you guys, I'm still not so great with this lighting crap. Um, Right. Um, I'm going to start on this side, doing the same thing starting at the bottom, working up. So now you guys can see that I have the front fully rooted and everything. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to root a little bit back here in the top, just because it's rooted and then it's not. So if you guys are going to use a part or anything, you just want to make sure that you just root a little bit behind where the part is so that it blends and it looks natural. Because if you don't, it's going to be like, why does that girl only have roots on the top of her head and not on the, the back? So I'm just going to go about maybe an inch from where that was. And I'm just going to comb that forward like this. And I'm just going to do the same thing again. Spray, comb, shadow. So now that you guys have the shading done, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your brush and you're just going to want to brush through it. You guys can see that this has some nice root shading in it. Although I'm looking at this in the monitor and it doesn't look too bad, but to me it's looking very, very red. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a darker shadow and I'm just going to go through and just add a little bit more dimension across with the darker shadow. So for that, I'm going to use this dark brown shadow right here, which is this guy in the Morphe brush palette right here. It's above the black. So I used the brown that's next to the black and then this one that's above the black. I'm going to go in quickly and just spray the whole rooting area and then just go in quickly with that darker color and just work it in just in the front just to give it a little extra movement and dimension and get rid of some of that warmth that I don't want. I want it to look brown, not red. There you go. And here she is all rooted and pretty. The light is terrible right now. I'm sorry. Turn my overhead light back on. Maybe that'll help. That helps a little bit. Okay. So you can see here that I just went along the front hairline and the parting area of the wig and I just shadowed in some root. You can see that the lace on this wig is very short. Um, so you can see that I have some eyeshadow on the lace and I have some eyeshadow on my blocking tape. And that is so easy to get rid of. When you're ready to wear your wig, you unblock it and you just take some alcohol on a Q-tip or a little gauze pad or something, and you just go in and you carefully 
take your Q-tip with the alcohol and you just remove that color from the lace. Um, also, if you guys go in and you do that, it'll kind of use the illusion of a bleached knot, like what you what you do on darker human hair to make it look more natural when you bleach the knots out. It almost gives it that effect. About this is that when you because you're using the hairspray, the color, the eyeshadow pretty much is encapsulated in the spray on the hair. So you can brush it. It's gonna it's gonna maybe lighten a little bit when you brush through it after a couple wears, but for the most part, it's gonna stay on there. I usually like to take my little spatula that I used to cover my eyebrows with, and I like to just scrape off the top layer of the shadow and blow it off. And what that's doing is that's just any hairspray residue that's on that top layer of hair, any hairspray residue that's on that top layer of shadow will be brushed off with the scraping tool and you'll blow it away. If you just, you know, scrape it real good with the thing and you blow and you get rid of the excess powder, you won't have to worry about getting hairspray in your eye. Okay, and so this is how to get the roots off once you add them in with the eyeshadow. So you'll just need your wig head. Um, I'm using a canvas one, of course. Um, you'll need a paper towel, and what I'll do, what I do is I put the paper towel over top of the head just so that any um, eyeshadow that get that comes off of the wig will go onto the paper towel and not the head. Your canvas head is not covered. You want to do a plastic bag and then a paper towel and then your wig just so that you're not going to get eyeshadow on your canvas so that it'll redeposit later once a wig gets wet because that's not going to be fun and your block's basically ruined. Not all of it's going to come out if you just wash it. So you kind of have to go in with alcohol and reactivate the hairspray and then kind of remove the excess pigment with a paper towel. So you're just going to go in there and you're going to soak her down with the alcohol like this. And you're going to take your paper towel and you're just going to blot and like pull down on the hair like this. And then that's basically what that's doing is that's just redepositing whatever pigment from the eyeshadow onto the paper towel off of the hair. Now you'll notice not all of it is coming off but a lot of it did. So you can see if I push her down a little bit. See, this is where the shadow was, and it's, you know, it's a little darker still, but it's also wet. But then you can see the front hairline I have not touched yet. Don't worry if you don't get all of it off when you, when you wash the wig, you'll get the rest of it off with the shampoo and the baking soda. So you can already see it's breaking down that color. It's lightening the hair back to where it was this. just want to repeat those steps all the way around the hairline of the wig and then wash it in baking soda and shampoo and kind of look at it after you wash it the first time and if it's not quite fully out you can put some more baking soda and shampoo right on the roots and just scrub a little bit and then um, kind of soak it for a couple minutes and you'll be good to go. Thank you guys for tuning in again. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It was a quick little guy about how to add some dimension into a wig. And like I said earlier, I've only ever done this on blondes. I've never done this on a dark wig or anything like that. So I'm not quite sure if it will work or not. So please don't ask me if it'll work. Just try it. <laughs> um, so just another side note. Again, you guys, I've only ever done this with brown or black shadows on a blonde wig. So if you guys leave me a comment saying, does this work on black hair with blonde roots? Or will this work on red hair with green roots? I don't know. I've never tried it, so why don't you guys at home get some hairspray, get some eyeshadow, and get to experimenting, and let me know if it works for you. Leave me a comment in the box, send me an email, send me a Facebook message, whatever. Let me let me know if you guys got it to work, and maybe I'll feature it in a super, maybe I'll feature it in a, in a few, uh. So send me guys a Facebook message, an email, a comment, anything. Let me know if it works for you, if you guys are trying other colors, or if you're using a pigment or anything like that. Let me know what works for you. Give me some tips and tricks, and maybe I'll feature them in a future video. In the meantime, like, comment, subscribe, and share, and check out www.bobbypins.com. So thank you guys again for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.